hello there um i just had to pop in to the estate agents to drop off a portfolio of art that we found in the loft from the previous owner who was he was apparently quite a prolific artist and um some of his older sketches he'd put in his portfolio and put in the loft um the pen drawings are exceptionally good in fact they're so good that i've actually scanned a few of them before i took it back uh, so i have a record of them um but that's why i'm out and about today i want to talk about the jubilee weekend welcome to another episode of Trophy stupid vlog let's start with the obvious it's nice to have a bank holiday nice to have a double bank holiday although one of the days actually we're borrowing from later in the year so that's, you know, an excuse for a party. I'm always up for that. So that's fine. Um, and from a perspective of the Queen, it's an impressive stint doing a job that's frankly unenviable. Um, and, uh, you know, so fair play. But I'm not a royalist. I'm, I'm quite a staunch Republican and I'd rather we didn't have a royal family. Um, and it's not again anything against this royal family in particular, although it seems to me that they seem to be um, harbouring at least one person of questionable morality um, but it's more to do with the fact that um, you need accountability from your head of state therefore you should be able to choose them um, because they do represent you and that's not to say the Queen has done a bad job I don't believe that at all but there's no guarantees there's no guarantees at all and um, you should be able to as a nation decide who should represent you on the world stage. Um, so I really dislike the sort of royalist fervour that goes along with Jubilee Weekend, the sort of flag waving. Don't get me started on flags. Like people don't know how to fly them, they don't know what colours they actually are. It's just a sort of a, it's an excuse for a sort of little Englandism, a sort of insular white privilege kind of bullshit bordering on racism at times that I just find really tiresome and it can go away and that's what really pisses me off about the Jubilee weekend so you know fair play to the Queen well done I'd rather we didn't have another monarch I think that's a good we should maybe go out with this one and call it quits um, and you can take your shit nationalist flag flying bullshit and shove it up your ass. There really isn't any more relaxing place in the whole world than a vineyard. And a vineyard in the Surrey Hills, I mean, this is kind of, you know, this is perfect. So this is Albury. This is our closest vineyard. This is a vineyard we're members of now because we were members of a vineyard in Gloucestershire. You might remember we used to go down there quite regularly. That's a bit trickier and they've cancelled the idea of membership. So we thought we'd join our nearest and dearest. So this is the Albury Vineyard. It's fantastic. They've just planted a new section over here, which I'm going to go and have a look at. And they also have a beekeeper locally. These are his hives. Um, let's go and have a look at this wild walk and then I'm going to come back and get my wine. So in this field to the right there, it's obviously quite wild at the moment. They've mown it partly, but they like to keep as much wild grass and flowers as possible because it attracts the bees but um they have planted new crop so this is a new um a new selection of vines i can't remember exactly which ones they planted uh, for future wines it looks quite exciting there's a walk through there at the moment but i can't open the gate at the moment i'm not really wearing appropriate footwear so I'm going to come back at some point. And this field behind is the most amazing wild meadow of grassland. I mean, it's amazing. I'm tempted just to come back here with the clippers and make some hay soup. Good afternoon. Welcome to the grounds of Chilworth Manor, which is where the originator of the National Gardens scheme uh, lived and is still on the National Gardens, uh, National Open Gardens scheme, which is why we're here today. 
Amelia's playing hide and seek with Crystal in the long grass. This is exactly what I'm trying to achieve in our garden. Like wild grass and then a beautiful path mowed through it. Um, I love it. It's a proper meadow. And then we've got alpacas in the back, which I think I showed last year, but there they are. They've got a beautiful walled garden back there and with an old school, like um, a sort of lean to greenhouse where you've got a brick wall on one side and a sloping roof. And that looks like a very old redwood. <laughs> this is a hilarious game of hide and seek. Give it a push. Give it a push. my back garden there's my there's my house behind me um, so you can now see how long it takes to walk from the patio um, all the way through the garden um, so I've just had my last uh, uh, last meeting as chair of the service delivery committee um, on the board that I sit on um, it's something I've enjoyed greatly because learning how to chair a meeting is you know, a fascinating skill and uh, yeah that was oh look there's the office um, sort of slightly melancholy if I'm honest finishing that so um yeah I've only got one more board meeting and then I leave RHP for the first time I've been on my board nine years actually I started in March so it's just over nine years really um anyway yeah I'm feeling a bit sort of emotionally drained after all that so there we go anyway um yes I'm now right at the bottom of the garden so there's the office there's the house back there see it took me a full minute um, so now you can see how I get my steps in in the day. Essentially, all I do is I walk up and down the garden because it takes long enough that you can do. I, no joke. The other day, I was at home all day and um, just walking backwards and forwards through the garden. I did nearly seven thousand steps. Isn't that bonkers? Um, anyway, I've now got to go and uh, collect Amelia from nursery. So. Um, going to go it's got turned a bit funny so I'm going to go and get my coat and uh, slowly wander over there she'll want to go to the playground for hours and hours and hours so that's going to be uh, a fun escapade now I'm going to have to bribe her to leave so uh, wish me luck it's the home of rugby aka Twickenham Stadium uh, which is where I am today <laughs> less than a week on from being at Wimbledon I'm feeling very um, you know British sport what have you I suppose technically English sport um, and I'm here to do some filming but I'm just gonna check in first and see what's what and then go and get the kit there's a hotel in here it's the uh, Marriott I believe which is where I'm heading for right now
I'm just lying in the garden because I'm really hot from stripping wallpaper and I just had a bat fly over my head. I was hoping I could film him but he's gone. Good morning. I've come to a vineyard. Something I used to do with great regularity but you know doing house things has meant I haven't actually left my own property in a while. Um, this is Greyfriars Vineyard which is um, off the Hog's Back uh, which is a road running um, sort of out of Guildford west towards sort of Farnham. It's on a ridge and this vineyard is on the hill on the south side of that ridge um, near Putnam. Now this is a fantastic vineyard. I've never been. I've read a lot about the wines. I'm very curious to taste them. Um, this is a sort of mishmash of different grapes here. It's mostly champagne grapes, you might imagine. This is some Pinot Noir. I've just come past the Chardonnay, which is in the previous field. There's probably some Pinot Meunier up there. Those are the three champagne grapes. And then they also grow Pinot Gris, a bit of Pinot Blanc. Um, and what else? I think there's one other. Um, but, yeah, it's really... Really nice vineyard, really nice setting. Oh. Wow, it is a beautiful morning. It's Tuesday morning, uh, yesterday, uh, I was at Wimbledon. All day, you saw that tiny clip. Um, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't there all day. I got there about 3.30, I think. We started recording about 6. Um, and we were there until 11. And, yeah, weird long days. But, you know, in the morning, there's, you know, it's a bit freer. Um... I mean, at the moment, life is a little bit chaotic. It's a much more pleasant form of chaos than we had before moving, but it is still lots of chaos. There's lots of people in the house doing things, mending things, plastering things. Um, the weather is stunning around here, but it's always a bit breezy. And I'm hoping that I get a couple of days to actually enjoy where I live in the world without, you know, stripping wallpaper at 11 o'clock at night or editing a Wimbledon podcast at midnight. Those kind of things would be really nice. But it was lovely to be at Wimbledon yesterday. It's the first time I've been during the championships for a long time, actually. Maybe a decade. Um, certainly close. Yeah, crazy that. And um, it's a lovely atmosphere. Um, and it's great fun, especially when you've got a pass and you can go anywhere. <laughs> It's a massive perk. Uh, so, yeah, uh, very good day. I'm a bit tired, but you know, I don't mind. I'm filming something else to, today in central London. So after I've recovered, hopefully, and spent a bit of time maybe going for a walk, then we'll um, then we'll progress um, onto the next project. And then tomorrow, more filming. This time at Formula One team Haas in Banbury and then Thursday I got a board meeting and Friday I got nothing on I might just sleep all day 